Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to turn to Isaiah 53. I know most of you, not all of you. My name's Dan Walter. Uh, you probably haven't seen me around here much. Uh, most of the last six months I've spent in hospitals. I uh, was diagnosed in mid-August with leukemia. It's uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia for those of you that are medical people. I, it took me about five months before I could pronounce it. And uh, so uh, I spent quite a bit of time in uh, KU Med in Kansas City and with all those Jayhawks. Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, some very, very nice people. And uh, they treated me wonderfully. I've gone through six rounds of chemotherapy. The chemotherapy uh, for me with this type of cancer is uh, basically. Um, an IV drip and so uh, my body has actually responded quite well mm -hmm. uh, I guess when we, when I get to heaven I'll know how much of that is uh, your prayers mm -hmm. to work for that I did uh, I died uh, September 13th that was a little awkward but my, <laughs> my heart stopped but I was in the hospital uh, in my I say the hotel room I was in my hospital room and uh, there was a nurse right there and she started Depression, and my heart stopped and, and called for help and there were two other nurses that helped and uh, happened to be two floors down from ICU and intensive care unit so they took me up there and I spent about a week and a half in ICU and they seemed to think that I was going to live and, and uh, put me back in the other part and then I spent a week in rehab and again I <clears throat> it was almost kind of a historically short recovery time and I when we get to heaven I'll find out how much that is a direct result of your prayers and I appreciate that. So Monday I go back uh, to KU Med we'll do a couple days of prep things and I'll start my seventh round of chemotherapy and then that will lead into a bone marrow transplant. Um, this type of leukemia uh, if you're a uh, kid, there's about a 95% cure rate. Uh, when you're my age, your percentages are a lot lower. And, uh, sorry. Uh, but, you know, I, I just haven't ever felt like uh, I was going to die from this. So I felt like uh, we needed to trust God and we needed to uh, keep our eyes open to what God was trying to teach us. And, and uh, I, I, I may die from it. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to die sometime. So are you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, those things happen. But I probably uh, won't be back in Manhattan until around May or so. They, uh, there's a process with the bone marrow transplant. And there's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And, uh, but uh, even if it goes smoothly, they like to keep you under supervision for 100 days after the transplant. So anyway... All that being said, uh, this may be, a, and this could all change, but this may be my last chance to see you face to face, and my last chance to share something with you, and I thought, what would I want to leave with you that would be significant? And just in case, I don't ever see you again. And I want to share something about Jesus and who he is, and what he's done for all of us. Let's read Isaiah chapter 53, we'll do the first uh, six verses. I'm reading from uh, the NLT. Isaiah 53, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised. We did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried, it was our sorrows that weighed him down. 
And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But we, he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. I don't know if you're like me, I, I would like to think that if Jesus walked in the doors this morning, that I would greet him warmly, recognize him, and invite him to a place of honor here. But uh, I read through this passage and I think, there's nothing beautiful about him, nothing majestic. There is nothing to attract us to him. And you know, we greet everybody that comes through the back doors. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way, and he was despised, and we didn't care. And I thought, <clears throat> how do I know whether I would respond this way to him? Well, a good, uh, a good measure is how do I respond to people that I can't see? that fit these qualifications. Now, when I was uh, in school, back around the Civil War, we had people that we called nerds. And nerds meant something different back then. It was, it was uh, somebody that was uh, not thought of well. Now, 40 years later, fast forward, and all those nerds, they're all multimillionaires out of Silicon Valley. You know, because they understood computers, but they didn't have any social skills. But they, they learned social skills. So, but there are people that aren't valued highly in our culture, in our society. And there are people that you look at them and you don't think, there's nothing to attract you to them. And I think that's probably a good measure of how we would have responded to Jesus. How do we respond to people in our world that we work with, that we come in contact with at Walmart. When I was uh, doing, uh, studying 1 Corinthians 13 I, about the love chapter, I was saying, what's the opposite of love? And I had always thought the opposite of love was hate. And I came through that study thinking probably a more practical definition for me was the opposite of love is just apathy. He was despised and, and we didn't even care. <laughs> I went back through this morning about uh, seven people that God brought into my life specifically that had the love and the courage to share the gospel with me at different times from junior high through high school through college and, and every one of them I said no thank you this isn't of interest to me I, I don't really care about Jesus and what he did for me and then the time was right. And I heard a man share how Jesus had died on the cross for my sins and gave me the opportunity to receive forgiveness and eternal life in Him. And I said, yes. And I'm so thankful that He gave me the eighth try. I don't know what try you're on. <laughs> you know? I know a bunch of you, and I know you've already said yes to God, but I've known people that came to church for years, and they were still on the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, 12th try, and they had never said yes to his offer of forgiveness and life. If that's you, I hope that today, is that last, that last one when you say yes? I've heard it before, but today is the day I want to receive Jesus Christ in my heart and life and then walk out of here with a new man and a new woman, forgiven of all my sins. 
Sorry, I'm digressing, but that's important. In this passage, it says, uh, we thought his troubles were punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. Can you imagine you and I standing at the cross and saying, he deserved it. What a loser. No, we we couldn't possibly ever do that. But I'll tell you what, we do it to other people. You see somebody that's struggling with something? <clears throat> Difficulties, financial relationships, and say, well, that's probably what they deserve for what they've done. And that's bad, but we do it to ourselves too. So, this is just punishment for my sins. I told somebody early on, I said, I, I've never really, with leukemia, I've never really struggled with this being a punishment for my sins. Because uh, my thought is, if God wouldn't have punished me for my sins, I would be at KU Morgue instead of KU Hospital. <laughs> because, I mean, oh my, oh my. If God wanted to let down the hammer, I mean, I'm done. I'm toast. I'm done. I'm gone. There's just no question. So I haven't really struggled with that one. We have weaknesses. We have things that we bring on ourselves, and a lot of times those cause us shame and guilt. And it can weigh us down. But there's one who can take the burden. We have sorrows and sicknesses and diseases and things that come upon us, and those things can cause us anger and bitterness. Make us weary, make us hopeless. And those things weigh us down. And the scripture says that Jesus took that love. We couldn't handle it. We've never been able to handle it. But Jesus took the load. Scripture says we've rebelled against God. Jesus took a spear in the side for us. It says we've sinned against God. And for that, his body was crushed. We were broken and desperately in need of healing. And for that, he took a beating. He was bruised, and his flesh was torn apart. That we might be whole. That our brokenness would be healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. There's two alls. There's one at the beginning and one at the end. One, we've all sinned. You think of the... The nicest, sweetest, dearest sister in your house church who always does wonderful things for people. And I'll tell you what, she's right here in the altar. She has at some point, at some level, walked away from God and disobeyed the voice of the shepherd and done her own thing. You think of the strongest, you know, dearest, servant-hearted brother in your house church. At some point, at some level, he has walked away from God and chosen his own path. Yet, the Lord has laid on Jesus the sins of us all. It's probably more than I wanted to share, plan on sharing. There you go. So if I don't see you for four or five months, give you something to remember me by. Isaiah 53, what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning. And what can I do but say thank you for all you've done for us? I take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, we do bless you. We do thank you and we do praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.